After we've made the changes to our MASH profiles, uh, it's just into the, the software itself and it has not yet been sent to the instrument. So it's important at this point when you've made these to either save this configuration to a file that you can recall later, uh, but to actually get it into the instrument you have to send configuration to an instrument. So that right now is sending all those parameters that we've saved here into the instrument itself and will be stored there. Uh, remember the software is monitoring, it does not actually use for control. The instrument itself is doing all the control. Next we'll show you how to actually run a profile. In this case uh, we're looking at current MASH profile 0. Say I want to run MASH profile 2 which as you recall is linked to MASH profile 3. I'll simply type in uh, run MASH Profile 2 and I'll say Run New. Click Yes. And when I'm ready to start the profile, I've got my uh, grains doed in and I'm ready to go. I just simply come over to here and click Start Profile. And that will run on the instrument and the instrument will let you know what uh, step and program you're running. In this case, it's telling you you're in current MASH Profile of 2 you're in the very first step, step zero, and it lets you know how many minutes are left in the step. The controller will from there uh, ramp and hold uh, through the duration of the uh, program. Another nice feature of the TopLink software is the graphing capability, so you can record uh, what actually happens during your brew day, and you can recall that uh, at a later time. So simply just click the graphing button and it'll open the graphing dialog box. In here you'll see a, a, a graph obviously. Um, you'll see some uh, buttons start sampling and stop sampling. Uh, here you will see the sampling data rate, duration, and the graph refresh rate. And of course you've got hours, minutes, or seconds for time. And you can either automatically scale the y and x axes uh, or you can uncheck that and use whatever scales you want. We'll just leave it uh, automatic. Um, these buttons over here uh, you can drop down and have either the set point that's on the controller or the actual reading um, of the sensor that's in the mash. And uh, depending on what color you want those to show up at you can just use the, these uh, uh, other colors. In this case we'll have the um, the actual reading in blue and we'll come down here and we'll have the set point uh, in red and to start sampling uh, just simply click the start sampling button and as you can see here uh, here is the set point uh, of 154 and here's our current temperature which is 79.4 I just have it in ambient so I'm going to uh, warm the sensor up with my hand and should be able to see it increasing in temperature as we go. So every two seconds it's going to take a data point. And as you can see, uh, as the time goes, it will automatically change the scale of the control for you. The next thing we can do, if you're done uh, doing that, is uh, stop your sampling. And uh, you can save your data. So simply uh, click Save Data. And uh, I've got some uh, uh, profiles here. I just call tuning test data and I can save that as whatever I want and click save and it'll save that. Another nice feature is being able to uh, recall the data after we've saved it. In this case we'll stop our sampling from our previous one and we'll restore data and we can do that from uh, any of our files and in this case I'll go uh, uh, with a previous one that I recorded and uh, here is uh, just a simple uh, manual ramp to our set point. So that's something that you can pull back later to, to uh, um, see uh, how your mash uh, actually went and uh, what things you might want to do different. When you've done uh, with your graphing, uh, to get back to that uh, main uh, configuration, just simply hit configure instrument and we're back where we were before. 
A uh, couple other things that we haven't talked about is the um, calibration offset we briefly talked about. Uh, if you've got a couple instruments and you want them to read exactly the same, this instrument will read within uh, plus or minus half a degree, which is uh, more than adequate for this application. However, if you're uh, an anal retentive engineer such as myself, sometimes you like them to read exactly the same. So you can just enter an offset of plus or minus, uh, you know, how many tenths of a degree you need to go. Uh, there's also a steady state offset. Um, uh, during the soak period, um, the, everybody's system will just settle in uh, maybe a couple tenths above or a couple tenths below uh, the uh, set point. And uh, it's absolutely fine to just leave it that way. If for some reason you want to increase that just a little bit, uh, you can add uh, an additional amount of percent on time for the cycle as it runs uh, its 30 second cycle. So you can just enter uh, another number in there simply by adding, uh, say, we want to go another 15% to kind of just raise that temperature just a little bit. We can go send offset and then click yes. Uh, that's a, a pretty advanced uh, feature. Uh, it sometimes can get the system a little unstable, but uh, we put it in there for people who really want to dial it in uh, exact and just like to play around. Uh, for most users, uh, we would just recommend leaving that at zero and uh, the controller will remain nice and stable for you. While you're in a MASH profile, uh, if you do hit the stop profile button, uh, it will actually uh, stop the instrument altogether and it will not pick back up where you left off. So just be aware uh, that if you do hit the stop profile, you will have to probably manually run the mash uh, the rest of the brew session. If uh, you bump your cable and you lose communication uh, to the instrument, that's uh, not a big deal. The instrument uh, is actually going to continue running. Uh, this software is just monitoring uh, that. So uh, don't worry if you've bumped the cable and uh, lost communication. You can reestablish communication with it. Uh, one thing you won't want to do is start the profile again or stop the profile. You just can monitor from that point forward. That concludes the description and operation of the Toplink software. Uh, the folks at Blickman Engineering would like to thank you for your purchase of the Tower of Power controller and also the uh, Toplink software. And if you have any questions, be sure to contact your retailer. They've got trained staff ready to help you through your brew day.